so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is uh, kind of a preliminary session for, for tomorrow. Blogging is all about the youth and about about people who want to make change and be leaders and inspire change and be that change and all and whatnot in the crisis in, in the crisis that we're all going through in these days. Um, everybody wants to have their voices heard, and so last year, Balisar Kasab, I'm the discussed that let's lead up to a place where we can invite and involve everyone. So this is not even though you see a panel here which is going to be moderated by Jahanara. Jahanara, are you still here or have you run off? So even though the panel is set up here, the idea is that while Jahanara moderates the panel up here, uh, myself and Shafa, got it? Can you stand up? Okay, so Shafa is, are going to be moderating all of you. Thank you very much, Jahanara. I don't look so bored. <laughs> so can we just have a round of applause again? Yeah. <laughs> the idea of the panel discussion is yes to talk about blogging and about leadership and about blogocracy and everything else, but to keep it limited so that we can get as many of you in this room to talk and be heard as possible. So Jahanara, your mind and Shafak's task, very challenging task, is to limit we decided on a minute and a half. A minute and a half is the average that we're going to be taking in terms of our comments and our questions. You want to ask a question, please ask whatever is in your heart and whatever is in your mind. But uh, just make it as precise as possible. We don't have a lot of time because right after the panel discussion, then I will leave my tablet. Right after the panel discussion, we've got our talk shops. Uh, I get Shafak to announce and share those details with you. But uh, we also want to have breakout sessions for all of you. So uh, the idea is please have your voices heard. Uh, but just make it precise enough so that uh, so everybody has a chance. Gee, everybody. So there are about 100 people in this, in this hall. Let's try and get as many of us to try and make a comment. Tiki, Tiki. Um, what was um, your I don't know. We're going to talk something. Otherwise, we could have probably have uh, Sana, is Dr. Saab here? Yeah. Okay, IBA has very kindly consented to become, you know, partners in that youth debate also here in Karachi. And for that, if you can help me invite, I'm trying to time this perfectly, Adan, tell me if I'm doing this right. Because I only have one take for this. So, uh, please help me join us in inviting and welcoming Dr. Ishra to the front of the hall. You're in the middle because Mother's going to be there and I'm going to be here. Business administration, which is the traditional field for which IBA has been known. But we are also very actively involved in information technology and the computer sciences. And one of the, yeah, that, that's what we were doing. One of the, uh, reasons why we welcome all of you is to find out what is really happening and how can we as an educational institution be able to respond to the future challenges. This is a field of the social media uh, which has become very powerful and for the youth uh, if you look at the whole Arab Spring movement, uh, there was no leader uh, for that movement. That movement was initiated by the young men and women uh, through their interactions in the social media. So the world around us is changing, where the established sources of power and authority and leadership are crumbling before our eyes. And it becomes quite imperative for educational institutions to listen to people like you who are active participants in this medium as to what we as the educational institutions can do. We may have our own vision, we may have our own strategy, 
But if it is not responsive to the needs of the young men and women of this country, then it will become totally irrelevant. Uh, this country is replete with beautiful documents, very well written, highly commendable as far as the content is concerned. But if you look at the track record of their outcomes, the implementation and the promises do not match. And the reason is that there is no consultation and involvement of the stakeholders. So I am not persuaded that driven by an individual or an institution, the visions are got any meaning. It is the cumulative participatory collaborative you know, approaches where the ownership is widespread and highly diffused that you can have some results. So I personally would have this coming from you and then you tell us as to what our institution can do in order to help you take it forward. And that is my request to all of you. So just a quick question, sir. Do you, do you uh, blog or are you on Twitter or Facebook and all these what these young people do? I, I am on the Facebook. Okay. I, I don't blog as much because what I do is that I post all my you know, uh, writings, articles, uh, papers, newspaper contributions on my website, which is just a passive way of disseminating information. But frankly, if I am active, then I have to devote time. And unlike these young men and women, I do not have the luxury either of the competencies they have in the Twitter or in the Facebook or the functionalities and the capabilities, I don't understand them so well. So I think I will be wasting too much of my time if I do that. Just one last question, yeah. sir. Do you have a, um, a podcast, do you have a, an idea to have a podcast or a webcast, let's say, through YouTube where you can talk? Because you're a very inspirational person, right? And uh, I mean, you walked in and some of the, some of the people, you know, some of the bloggers started to stand up. Um, but do you have plans that, you know, maybe by using Google Blog or YouTube or something, have a webcast and inspire us? I think there are um, some of my uh, presentations and speeches are on YouTube. Okay. But I don't make uh, a particular attempt myself. But for example, if there are sponsors of the conferences like uh, the Institute for Chartered Accountants, which you also attended as a CFO, they have that on the YouTube. And similarly, other places also, we have uh, the PMA Capital had an international uh, conference call, and you know, uh, I was there, and uh, they have put this on the YouTube. So my contribution is zero. It is others who try to. Uh, you know, your content. Yeah. Basically, they're using your content. Yeah. Yeah. So, a mira, uh, a question, uh, maybe uh, just thought would be: Is idea planning to include these new sciences uh, as part of the curriculum? especially for the graduating MBAs or the specialists, uh, the new media, which is all of our uh, Yeah, I think we have started uh, in our business school, uh, the media studies. This is for the first time we are doing it. But we want to expand this area because this is becoming uh, very, what I say is demand-driven field. So we have to be, <coughs> similarly on the IT side, on the technology side, I think our societies, the student societies, the web society and the information management society, they are quite active uh, in all these media. And if there is a demand from the students, we can certainly include them 
in our uh, curriculum, as we review and revise, we have a whole process where one individual cannot say that this is what you should have in the curriculum. This is a whole process. And we have focus groups. So we will have focus groups of people from outside IPA and inside IPA. And if there is a consensus that this ought to be included in the uh, curriculum, and something else has to go out, those are quite difficult decisions. And we will take those decisions. Great, great to hear that. Uh, Dr. Isha, thank you very much for your time. I know you were extremely busy yeah. and tight for time. Um, just a correction that actually a lot of these bloggers are working and they they blog by fashion. Um, and we'll be recording our proceedings today, all day today, and the awards tomorrow. And you'll be able to, if you read some of the profiles of these, of all of us who are young, including yourself, I mean, somehow we find the time because there's such a passion for representing the correct content and the correct news through various avenues which all of us have available to us. So we certainly wish you all the best and hope that we can learn from you in, what, in, in leadership, that we can continue to learn from you and perhaps what IB can learn from this entire group, yeah. Karachi, Lahore, and Saba, um, <coughs> what the blogosphere is all about. I look forward to that and thanks very much and wish you best of luck for the rest of the evening. Great. Can we
who is, by the way, no, not many people know that, but she is in her final, final, final year of medical school, so she's going to be called Dr. Sanatini. But what she's known better for is her activism. She writes for Global Voices. And I want Sana, Sana, if you can just quickly tell us about the role of activism and the leadership role that people in Pakistan have been playing as far as bringing uh, ideas and issues online. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think that, um, I think the blogging really got the, for blogging in Pakistan really got into the limelight when during Musharraf's dictatorship media, uh, there was a complete media blackout. And this was the time when um, I joined Global Voices as well and Avav and other voices today. I think new media offers an alternative to uh, broadcast media, with, which I'm aware that many of us have many issues with. Because of course, because of so much happening in Pakistan, stories, individual stories are covered. We all know that the foreign policy and the foreign politics that we have, that covers most of what is in the extreme media. But individual stories of people, what we struggle with, are only, can only be brought about when, if I'm on Twitter or if I'm somewhere, only I can bring that, I have my platform to share that, okay, there's load sharing for eight hours, or there's, there's some other problem. So I think new media truly does bring out this one sphere where you can hear the voices of people. And just a short uh, thing about Global Voices. Global Voices uh, is a project for the Berkman Center, Harvard, Harvard University Berkman Center. And it's primarily, it grew as a media platform where they only cover stories or they cover reactions of news stories that people share on their Facebook, on their Twitter, on their blogs. So stories that don't get highlighted in the new media get highlighted there. And now it has over 300 bloggers from around the world, even countries like Cambodia and uh, Madagascar and various parts of Africa we don't even have mainstream, that popular mainstream media. So in a nutshell, I think that new media is truly shaped up to bring, uh, to be an alternative and a much more powerful alternative to reach out to people. And we see that happening now with political parties actively using social media. Thank you, Sam. Uh, brother, we come to you next, and can you share some figures as to the population in Pakistan that is online and the different media that they are using online for activism and leadership? And before we, before brother answers this question, just want to let you know that after each of the panelists has made their opening statements, we're going to open this up to you for comments, questions, interactions. So be ready. Once again, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> 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 Globally, it's about 1.7 billion low internet for me. 1.7 billion low out of the 5-6 billion total population. Uh, Pakistan can be 170 million or 80 million population may say it's about 22 million internet for me. 22 million people Pakistan may internet use for uh, 5.6 million degree Facebook for me Pakistan may uh, other people are also using Facebook. Grow carry on or doing the other million other. Uh, Twitter page is about Pakistan se tiri ban 4.5 lakh users hain. So, the Facebook figure thi, wo Facebook ki official figure hai. Jo Pakistan ke internet users ki thi, wo PTA ki figure bhi aur Google ki figure hai hai. Aur ITU ki figure bhi hai hai. Jo Twitter ki figure hai, ye maa ko Google ke estimates pata raha hon. LinkedIn pe tiri ban 9 lakh loog hai Pakistan se. Almost a million people now. LinkedIn pe profiles hai Pakistan se. Again, it's a Google figure and LinkedIn official figure as well. 
और कौन सी वो हम बताते नहीं सॉरी गूगल उसकी एक वजह ये कि हम सॉरी आई थिंक यू कैन टेक ट्वेंटी टू मिलियन एज गूगल यूजर्स एंड यू कैन देन प्रॉपली स्ट्रेपुलेट के ये थर्ड पार्टी को एस्टिमेट है आई डोंट नो कोई सोर्स इसकी कोई सोर्स सोर्स क्या है इंटरनेट सोर्स सो ये है द रेस्ट इज सम ऑफ द टॉप विजिटेड वेबसाइट फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान एंड फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान जो वेबसाइट्स हैं उनमें जियो डॉट टी वी इज द मोस्ट सॉरी जंग डॉट कॉम डॉट इज द मोस्ट विजिटेड वेबसाइट ऑफ पाकिस्तान फ्राम पाकिस्तान Uh, and then we have uh, one of the very small I don't know paperpk.com अगर आप लोगों ने नोटिस किया है फिर that is also one of the top visited parknews.com is also one of the top visited websites uh, so ये बात से कुछ top visited other than the media कुछ media websites जो के वैसे बड़े known brands हैं they may not be most visited websites on the web in Pakistan उनकी expected traffic ज़्यादा है I hope I've given quite a lot of uh, answers for that हॉटमेल और याहू भी अपनी फिगर शेयर करते हैं आई थिंक उनके भी पाँच छः मिलियन के करीब अपने यूजर्स हैं पाकिस्तान में रजिस्टर्ड जो वो डिस्क्लोज करते हैं फ्रॉम एडवर्टाइजिंग परस्पेक्टिव आई थिंक आप बेहतर बता सकते हैं आपको been involved with the launch of a very popular uh, online i don't know what to call it an online presence Experience. which bother which bother forgot to mention although he does mention it every time he speaks folk studio so can you tell us a little about how that happened i actually have checked the latest numbers yeah. so uh, as per last year uh, december 2010 folk studio was the world's 12th most yeah. visited channel uh, this is a special figure From Google, twelfth uh, most visited channel in the world. Or us, I think you have two video. Ah, yeah. Six million views. Six million views. Six million views. Just one video has six million views already from Pakistan. So, if you can tell us a little about how that happened and how it took off, you know, how long did it take for it to take this leadership? Well, I think. Uh, First of all, I'm the video producer for Coke Studio, so uh, I mean a lot of the credit goes to the brand, and of course, Ray and Ayan. But uh, we always went side by side, as you know. Every year, Coke Studio has a roadblock, and they have to be my channel. But with that, with that, the real um, sort of replay value happens on, on uh, channels like YouTube and through the Facebook page and wherever the videos are going. Um, so I think about three years ago, we really started taking it seriously, and uh, now what's happened is we really figure out how many international demographics are there. Uh, people in India really started tuning in. People from the region, Afghanistan, uh, you know, wherever uh, there's interest in, in some continental music, I think uh, uh, Coke Studio really reached out. Um, and I, I don't, I don't really know what to say about it except that I was recently in um, India, this Asia Society conference. Or uh, there's a lot of tension. Afghan, with the Afghanistan contingent, there was a lot of tension. We don't even see why. But as soon as I, they found out that I was from. Uh, Working on Coke Studio, they were so happy with Do Gaane and Darin, uh, Bibi Sanam and Pemona, and that just completely broke the ice. Um, they were like, "Yeah, I'm Rose Sunte. Yeah, my ये इतनी बड़ी चीज़ है. इतने फाकर से करते हैं ये वो." So we've become more of a regional platform uh, coming out of Pakistan. Coke Studio has become is becoming more regional. Started in India, has become more regional. Middle East will be plans hai, Africa will be plans hai. So um, the idea is that it's become uh, more than just. Uh, I think the internet is not. Doesn't have those boundaries of the nation state. I think we create our own identities on the internet. Of what I think all of us here belong to communities that don't necessarily just belong to Pakistan. And I think that's really where people are forming identities. And I think the Coke Studio, for one, I mean it's not the only thing I've done online, but um, for one, it's been uh, taking a really leadership role in terms of the youth and inspiring the youth and also giving Pakistan a strong counter narrative to the whole uh, terrorism, uh, instability. Uh, sort of your major Western traditional media can add it. There's a lot more to talk about, and we'll be open for questions afterwards. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you. You phrased it so interestingly. That's not the only thing I've done online. <laughs> so then that opens no, up to the next question. I just I don't want to say. I mean, I, I'm not.
not here just representing Coke Studio. Actually, I didn't know why I was here initially, but I said, I'm going to focus on this. Because Ravi decided we were going to be here. Okay. That's the only I mean, I've got another campaign which I can talk about later, which is also just all web based. Okay, so there's another brand. How many of you have heard the Khamoshi ka boycott slogan? See? You've got fans here. So uh, tell us, I think that's, other than branding the juice, it's also trying to bring about a social change. So can you tell us a little bit behind the background of that and how well it's done? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, talking about social media and the digital platform itself, uh, I think the fact that corporations like Telma and brands like Nature's have taken on the bandwagon is testament to the fact that it is now not only believed, but it is a fact that this domain, this new wing of uh, media is, is a big thing, it's a fact. It's not a fad anymore. So it's to about getting the geeks by the consider the other that's not no more. It's serious business now and there's money involved, there's uh, awareness involved, there's numbers involved. But then only got that Regarding uh, I think uh Hamushika Burkot and uh, the fact uh, how does it marry up to uh, blogging and everything. Blogging is all about uh, expression, it's about talking. And Hamushika Burkot is all about revolution from within, about social change. And to a social change taken to the masses is sort of, you know, uh, marries very well with the idea of blogging and the reach that uh, social uh, platforms and digital platforms provide. Hence our, uh, our collaboration and our focus on uh, social media. Now, uh, the fact, uh, I mean, traditional media was involved in the launch uh, of the entire thing, but I think uh, social media, for me, we've done uh, brilliantly well. Ever since the launch of the campaign, our, uh, um, the, Social media account on Facebook, uh, our fan base is, uh, I think, increased by 176%. Our uh, Twitter accounts have increased by 120%, uh, so and so forth. So, the traction we have here from social media and uh, from uh, digital domain, that has been phenomenal. And that shows that the youth of Pakistan and Jesus being a youth brand, they are focused on this thing. So, in the next few days, this is the media, this is the, the just one new voice can is going to be the voice for uh, for bulk of the population. Uh, I mean there are more questions if uh, anybody is interested, I'm uh, more than happy to answer it. Uh, okay, so last but not least, uh, Ravi, you've got a Brands and how to actually get maximum impact from you. When Sharik mentioned the 120% increase, 170 percent increase, that's a, that's a certain number and great and you know, kind of thankful that he actually looked at that number and came back and shared that with you and that gives you an insight about growth and his his vision about understanding about what's 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 the impact of what he's doing. Uh, analytics is very loose term. Um, analytics could, could be anything, but in, in, in depth, in the core depth of things, analytics is supposed to be a method for you to allow, that allows you to make decisions. Our analytics roles are that most web publishers, that includes content publishers like newspapers and all these people, and brands who have their own websites. For them, analytics only means that we have our website, where are we from, where are we from, and where are we from. They still ask the word hits. Hits give them. So, the, so, so, so on, a, on a broader scale, I would say there's very little um, action on the numbers. If I were a brand, my, my question is when I'm working with someone on the analytics side, my question is my, when they come up to me with a question, I count the question. Why? Because my question is, what do, you do, what, what do you want to do with a number like that? Why do you want this number? Give me a business. See, when you have data, you're supposed to look for answers. Come up with a question and then see what you can find. It, it's, it's like an ocean. You have to fish for something. You can't just go and put in a you know thing and let's see let's see what comes out. Then that's really not what you're looking for. Um, the numbers that are out there, there's so many numbers. Google, Google Analytics is a great platform. It's very deep. It's very um, insightful for those who want it to be. Um, it can require certain customizations if needed, um, but 
And on a very basic level, if you log into the platform, it will tell you some numbers, which will only mean something to you um, based on what your business is. So if you were a front page related thing, your bounce rate will be more, and then you're concerned that you know, and because you read on some website, the you know, bounce rate should be low, and then you'd be thinking, why is the bounce rate so high? So it, it all depends on what your business is. Um, it also depends on what you want to know from that from those numbers. If you first your business, you know, after that, you know, and then first understand what can you do with information or look for a problem you want to solve. Thanks, I'm telling you well over your time. Sorry, guys, all this time. 